Okay, now one B. It says we use a comma between each phrase in a list. Phrase in a list. We remember the definition of phrase as giving at the beginning of this lesson a group of words without a subject verb combination. So when we have phrases in a list, we use a comma between them. But before the very last phrase, use and. Use and before the last phrase. Now let's see an example. I looked through the binoculars and saw a man struggling in the water, comma, a speedboat moving towards him, and a helicopter lowering a rope ladder. Now let's let's see. This is the beginning of our sentence. I looked through the binoculars. I looked through the binoculars. This is a this is a complete clause. It can stand on its own. It's not a phrase because it has a subject, I, it has a verb, subject verb combination, and they agree, you know. I looked, and then the rest of the information given in the sentence. Now it says, I looked through the binoculars, right? And saw a man struggling in, in the water. From saw a man struggling in the water is a phrase. Because you can't have a complete sentence beginning from here, saw, who saw? Where is the subject? The subject is all the way back here. So when we rem when we cut the sentence from here, from saw up to water, we have a phrase. There's no subject verb combination here. So phrase one, starting from saw to water. Another phrase starting from A to him. A speedboat moving towards him. Another phrase. And the third phrase, a helicopter lowering a rope ladder. See, in all these three examples, we don't have a subject verb combination, which is why they're phrases. So since we have a, a group of phrases, we use a comma. After the first phrase, we have a comma. And before the last phrase, we use and, only and, according to the rule. Now, 1C says, use a comma after an adverbial clause of time. It, here it's very specific, not just any adverbial clause. It says an adverbial clause of time. We know what adverbs are, right? Adverbs modify verbs. We remember all the different variations of adverbs. Adverb of time, adverb of manner, adverb of place, adverb of degree, and so on. Now, here is not just an adverb, adverbial clause. So it means it has... Uh, it's a group of words with a subject verb combination acting as an adverb in the sentence. A group of words with subject verb combination acting as an adverb in the sentence. Acting as an adverb in the sense that they're telling us, they're describing when an action happened. So when we, when we have or when we're making use of such clauses, adverbial clause of time that begins a sentence, we put a comma after the adverbial clause of time. Now let's see an example. After we had finished dinner, we sat on the patio and played cards. Now let's see. What is the action here? We sat on the patio and played cards. When did we do this? See? When did we do all these actions, these two actions? When did we do it? Adverb of time, when? After we had finished dinner. This is a clause. I said a clause contains a subject verb combination, right? Let's see. Here we have we, right? We is the subject. Had finished is our verb phrase, okay? So we have subject and verb combination. Therefore, we have a clause. After we had finished dinner, comma, you must put a comma after the adverbial clause of time. If it's at the beginning. Now, what happens if, it's, if the uh, adverbial clause is at the end? We do not use a comma. As in this second example, we sat on the patio and played cards after we had finished dinner. Here, we don't have a comma because it's placed at the end of the sentence. The adverbial clause of time is at the end of the sentence. All right. Now, 1D. It says, use a comma after a long phrase that begins a sentence. Again, they're using phrase. We know the meaning of a phrase, girls. Uh, 
you can rewind to the beginning of this uh, lesson to remind yourself, because if I keep repeating the definition of phrase or clauses, it's going to make this longer, okay? So use a comma after a long phrase that begins a sentence. Let's see. Desperate to get a ticket for the Thomas Cup Finals. Desperate to get a ticket for the Thomas Cup Finals. Keith left his home at 5.30 a.m. so that he could be one of the first few people in the queue. Now, this is a long phrase. When you look at it, there's no subject here. There's no subject-verb combination. We have a verb, but we don't have a subject. Therefore, it's a long phrase. So when we have a long phrase at the beginning of a sentence, we use a comma. 1E, use a comma before and after a clause or phrase that gives extra information in a sentence. When we talk about uh, clauses or phrases that give extra information, I want you to uh, draw your mind back to our reading lesson on uh, clauses, relative clauses introduced into sentences to give more information and to make the sentences complex. If you remember that lesson in the reading, I think it was unit five of the Cambridge checkpoint, then this will, you, you'll be able to understand this faster. So in such situations where we're introducing a clause, a relative clause or a relative phrase to give extra information in a sentence, we must use a comma before and after the relative clause or relative phrase. Okay. Now let's see, Richard, this is the subject. Now I want to give extra information about Richard, my neighbor's son. This is a phrase here because it doesn't have a subject verb combination. This is a relative phrase, all right? Richard, comma, my neighbor's son, comma, is doing a course in mechanical engineering. Now, remember, in that Cambridge Checkpoint lesson, we were told that when we take out the relative clause or relative phrase, the rest of our sentence should be able to be meaningful on their own. Uh, if, just to draw a connection here. If you remind yourself, you will understand better. So, if I must introduce that relative phrase or that relative clause, I must use a comma before and after it, as in this case. Please take note. Now, that's it. Uh, these are all the rules on comma for today we're going to go into rule two